Hello crafters and terrain builders, it's the Dungeon Master back with another video. Uh, today's video is going to be a simple build. We're going to make a well uh, using just a couple pieces of this here uh, Dollar Tree foam core, a square dowel, and a couple of these old uh, wedding invitations that I have from my sister's wedding that are really just uh, cardstock. So we'll end up using this for the roof. This will make the base and the side walls, and this will make the wooden supports. I will use a small Hearst Arts mold for the bucket, and some string for the rope. And I'll make a, a crank, a pulley, out of other components. Stick around and we'll get started. my little her starts bucket that I casted in uh, casting resin just uh, the basic stuff that you get from Michaels came out pretty good and we're gonna use this for our bucket okay the first thing that I'm gonna do is uh, use this uh, compass this is my old uh, my grandfather's old compass he's had this he had this for many many years uh, it's, it's, it's old it's got an ink nib as one of the points on it, but I'm going to use this to draw my circle, and I've, I've um, used, just using my cutting mat, I've quickly uh, measured it out an inch, so this will give me a two inch circle for the base, which I figured is about big enough for a well, for uh, 28 millimeter miniatures. So I've got my piece of uh, dollar store foam core here, and I'm just going to peel off one side of it, because to cut out my pieces I'm going to be using my foam cutter. So I want my markings on the actual foam. So I've got this here. I'm going to set it so it's not quite at the edge. And I'm going to draw in my circle very lightly. And then I should have enough space around here for the side of the actual so I'm going to get my hot wire foam cutter and we're going to start cutting some pieces here. And now I've got my Dollar Tree ready board here with both of the sides of paper cut off of it or ripped off of it. And I've got my circle and I'm just going to uh, use this as my measurement here. I'm not even going to put a line to follow. I've got my guide here. And I'm just going to kind of line it up where I think it'll be best. I don't want to make it too high. I think uh, waist height of a miniature is high enough. So we'll just turn it on, we'll just rip this down real quick. some sandpaper here, just very lightly sand it down to get to where my mark was. I'm not worried about wearing a mask because I'm not vigorously sanding this, I'm just lightly sanding it. I'm putting very little pressure on this as I drag it across the paper. There we go, we have a decent circle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to slowly and, and uh, gently Wrap this around my base while applying some hot glue to it. Yeah, we're definitely not gonna have enough foam here. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna cut myself up another piece of foam. I've got my piece of foam here and we're just gonna kind of glue it to here. It's 
Not exactly correct, but I don't care. All right, we're gonna clean up the hot glue and then uh, draw in some bricking patterns. We've got a square doll, quarter inch square doll uh, that I picked up from the hobby store. Michael's to be exact. So we're gonna determine how tall we want it. And I'm thinking about that high. That would be about two and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna cut up two of these and a couple and uh, one that goes across for the top and a brace, uh, two braces that come out the side. Okay, so I think I've come up with an angle I like, which as it would have it, since that's a 45, we'll end up making that a square. So I'm going to just come in here, right about here, just make a very small piece, and then I'll just use that piece to cover it. So now I'm just going to guess here, using my uh, blocks as a guide, where I want to place them. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to measure, I'm going to just tick the center of my support beams here. And I'm going to bevel them slightly. There we go. That was easy. Each side. Since it's with the grain, that cuts relatively easy. So now what I've got is something that follows this angle. So when I place the roof tile on it, it will sit and have a nice uh, space to, to rest here and a nice peak up here. That's the hope anyway. All right, so I got my holes uh, drilled out. And you can see here I had a little bit of breakage. It was a little crooked. Not a problem, not at all. Um, we're just gonna use uh, super glue glue it in, that's all, and make sure that uh, it's nice and strong when we put it back together. So, so we're going to have, uh, we're just filling in the holes back with more wood, so is isn't really that big of a deal. I'm going to come in from over here, the side where the hole was actually decent, and just slide this right through. So now what I want to do is make a uh, handle for it. To do that, I'm going to use a piece of coffee stirrer. And another piece of this uh, owl, this, or sorry, uh, barbecue skewer. I've got my side that split. We're just going to glue it kind of slightly off kilter here to the side. I'm just going to put a bead of super glue here and just stick this right to it, right like that. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just checking my distance here. I'm gonna go roughly to there. So I'm just gonna say it's two of these wide and then I can trim it down more if I need to. That's the width of that. Now I need to find the length. If you want a slight overhang, right about there is good. So I'll just take a little a little tick with my knife there. Cut that down. I don't know if you can see that, but it's right there. Just make it more or less square. We're going to be putting shingles on this roof, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, there we go. I've got these strips of balsa wood. It's flat, it's thin, it's about the size of a coffee stirrer, but it's a little, a little bit wider. It's much softer wood. I can actually cut it with a knife. I want to measure. I just want to mark my three eighths.
Okay, so I have some roof tiles cut here, three eighths of an inch in length from a piece of uh, eighth inch uh, balsa wood. And I made a, I glued a small strip of coffee stir stick to the base of the roof panel, and that will enable the, the tiles to raise up just slightly so that when I lay more than one course, get an excellent tiling effect. Now I'm going to use hot glue to glue these down because I can move faster doing it. Okay, so I've finished both of my roof panels, and you'll see here some of the squeeze out from the hot glue. I'm just going to clean that up just by rubbing the tip of my hot glue gun along the edges. Okay, now what I want to do what I want to do is I want to paint everything and get my bucket and my string all set on here and paint it and get the water effects in the bottom before even putting the roof on. And then when I, when that's all done and everything's, you know, the roof's got a black base coat on it, then I'll come in and finish the roof. But before then I want to be able to get under here and I can't do that while it's, uh, while it's got the roof on. So I'm going to do all this stuff first.
So I noticed my little bucket here, my uh, little Hearst Arts bucket, had these two little indentations um, on the sides. So I'm going to take a pin, push pin here, and uh, heat it up with this tea light and push the pin through to make a bail out of this uh, jewelry wire. Hopefully it'll work. And, uh, then my bucket will have a little bail on it to hook the rope up to. So what, I, what I'll do after I'm done painting it, I'll bend this up and put it in the holes like a bale, and then I'll super glue it in place so that it won't move. So basically, I made, uh, this is the shape that I made out of it, if uh, the camera will focus. Basically just made a D-ring that I'm going to insert into the handles here that will allow me to have the bail. And we had a little breakage here on this side when I poked it through. So I am going to just super glue it and then I'm going to hit the whole thing with just a little bit more spray paint just to make sure that I'm not going to get any white bleeding through. But there we have it. There's our bucket. All right. Well, I'm uh, waiting for my Mod Podge to dry. I have some, some string here that I'm going to use for my... Uh, my rope for my bucket. And what I want to do is I have some brown ink. This is a uh, polyester string, so it may not take the, the dye too well, but I'm going to put, put a bunch in the bottom of this cup. It's uh, sepia ink, and I'm going to soak the string in it. But I want to make sure the ends don't fray, so I'm going to slightly burn them. Cut them down after to length. I'll just wrap it around my finger like this. Give it a little bit of a, a knot. Not too bad. And just throw it in. Seems like it's taking it up pretty well. I just wanted it to soak in. And then I'm going to pull it out. Set it on a paper towel to dry. Soak up any excess. Okay, now that my bucket's dry, I'm gonna paint it up real quick. As soon as I can find my good brush. I just have one of these uh, crap smart brushes. I'm just going to use regular brown. I think just that little bit will be enough for the wood that I have to paint today. Now instead of using the, the darker iron, the metallic gunmetal, I think I'm going to use silver for this so it'll stand out a little more. And then when I put the wash on it, it will uh, the detail will stand out a little more and the, the silver will darken to the color of the iron that I want. Instead of the opposite way, doing it a little bit first. Now that that's all dry, I'm going to do a little bit of khaki dry brushing on the wood. Dry brushing with a khaki color. Just to bring out some of that wood grain. Slightly bigger brush now that I don't need some detail. Come back with the same khaki color. Start hitting this. It's 
now I'll uh, hit the base of this with some gray. I'm gonna try to keep that bottom interior black though. I'm gonna use my, my usual two-tone gray I'm using pewter gray and granite gray. I have the apple barrel pewter gray. You can get this at Walmart. How I choose to do my stonework, other people prefer to do other colors. I'm actually just going to hit this right around the side with just a dry brush. A heavy dry brush, but a dry brush all the same. I like this uh, this gray because it's more of a it's got more of like a, a green tint to it than a straight gray. And that's okay. I got a little bit of brown in it there. That's okay. I'll just leave that. I'm not going to worry about it. Well, because I did that heavy dry brushing, instead of actually painting it on, I can already touch this. It's already dry enough for me to pick up and manipulate these. Okay, that takes care of the pewter gray. And while I have it up open like this, I'll come in and touch up the bottom with the black. So just a little bit on my brush. I'm not going to need much. I want this bottom nice and black for when I put my epoxy resin in. Okay, now we're gonna get our granite gray. I got this one at Walmart as well. Apple barrel granite. We're gonna do a dry brushing with this as well. Yeah, I like that, that looks good to me. I'm going to paint the bands around the sides and the bail. And I'm just using a regular uh, Craft Smart brush, a number three. There we go. And we have our bucket. Okay, so I got my, my brown string here. And I'm going to just uh, snip this little end off that I had here, that I melted. I'm going to put a single drop of super glue on the top here. A good amount, not too god awful much, but you don't want it to, to pool too much. And I'm just going to glue this to it. I'm just going to let that sit up and dry, and then we'll start wrapping it around our central uh, spool. I've just super glued the edge of the string to it to the bale and now I'm going to glue it down to the edge of my well and wrap the string around the spool. And I'm going to keep the bucket on this side here with the crank. I'm just going to perch it like right here. Just a small bead of hot glue. Put a small drop of super glue on here to get the string started. And I'm just going to lay it across like that. Wait for that to set up and then I'm going to wrap it around. I have my uh, clear epoxy here, my five minute epoxy. And I'm just gonna put some in the bottom of my cup. I don't need to hold hell of a lot. We're just going for an effect here. You may not even really see it. Some in the bottom of the cup here. And 
I've got a coffee stir and just a little bit of blue paint. I'm just going to do one little, little tiny dab on there just to give it some color. Mix it up to tint it. Oh yeah, that's going to be perfect. Okay, it's time to attach our roof segments. And they're just gonna sit about as evenly as possible on uh, those pieces right there. So I've got a balsa sheet here. Um, I'm going to just mark a couple of points on here, one of which is going to be the length that I need. And I'm going to cut that first before I measure my length. I'm just going to come in with my square and my big hobby knife. And then I'm going to guess about how much I need here. Probably going to be about that much right there. So I'm going to say about an eighth of an inch. Yeah, that'll work. I'm going to just cover it in the Mod Podge and black paint. One of the things that I feel like I messed up on on this uh, model for, before we finish it, I haven't put the top coat on yet. Everything else is, uh, is done. I even coated the bottom with some Mod Podge. Was I put the epoxy resin in the well earlier before I put the roof on because I thought it would be easier to put the epoxy resin in. One of the things I forgot is that I'm using a satin polyurethane which is going to dull anything shiny. So I had to come in 
and you can't quite see it in there, but I had to cut out a, another piece of cardstock to put in there and notch out the, the wood beams so that when I come in later and put my polyurethane on it, it's not going to dull the shine on it. And here we have the completed product. Complete with the water on the inside. Little bucket. The rope wrapped around the uh, spindle, the handle, and of course our roof tiles. Very happy with the outcome of this build. I'll definitely be using some of these techniques again, although I don't think I'll have much use for another weld. Everybody, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I just wanted to do a little housekeeping real quick. Um, first of all, I, I just want to thank all of my subscribers uh, and all of the people who've left likes on my channel, comments. Oh, you guys are awesome. Uh, I really appreciate you and everything that you've done to help me with this channel, uh, what it is so far. I want to keep pushing and I want to keep getting better and I want to keep making uh, more videos, uh, more content, and more projects. That, that being said, if you uh, if you like the content that I've made, consider becoming a subscriber on Patreon. Every dollar that I earn there will go back into making this channel, uh, you know, buying supplies and stuff that I need uh, to make further projects like foam board, glue, uh, little knickknacks from the uh, dollar store, all that stuff. Um, a dollar can go a long way at the dollar store. Um, if you like the video that I've made, uh, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, uh, ask me any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, everybody have a safe and happy uh, holiday season, and I uh, hope to see you soon. Bye for now.